So far we have been discussing the fundamentals of JavaScript. Now it's time to understand what is really happening behind the scene when you run a JavaScript file. It will be discussed in next video. Now here in this video we discuss two things that you must know before learning how JavaScript works in the background. Without knowing these points it would be difficult to fully understand JavaScript behind the scenes. So let's review them one by one. First of all, you should know the relation between ECMAScript and the JavaScript engines provided by different web browsers. Suppose we have got a JavaScript file, say script.js. Where do we run it? We need a platform or an environment to execute the program, often called as runtime environment. If you have experience in other programming languages, you should know this. Prior to start writing the program, we'll be installing a runtime environment for the particular language. For example, for the language Java, we have to install Java Runtime Environment, often abbreviated as JRE. That of C Sharp is .NET Framework. Like that, all programming languages have a runtime environment. Prior to executing these programs in these languages, we have to install these runtime environment. Do you recall installing any such runtime environment for the language JavaScript? No. Because it already comes with web browsers. Whether it is Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox or Microsoft Edge or any other web browsers. Now, once we run the program within these web browsers, independent of the browser we choose, the output from all these browsers must be the same. That's the job of browser manufacturers. I will explain. Mainly, there are two engines in a web browser. Rendering engine, which is responsible for rendering HTML and CSS files. And then we have a JavaScript engine to read and carry out the JavaScript program that we write. And these engines are not referring to something like engines that we see in automobile vehicles. It is another software like any other runtime environment. So each browser manufacturer has to develop their own engines. The JavaScript engine of Google Chrome is V8. That of Firefox is Monkey. Chakra is the engine in Microsoft Edge. Now, to get uniform output across these engines, standardization of the language JavaScript is a must. And it is done by ECMA International's TC39 committee. They specify rules and guidelines to implement the language, which is called ECMAScript. This includes language syntax, semantics, libraries, and complementary technologies. These topics are commonly discussed in a JavaScript beginners course, things like data types, variables, or functions, operators, and their features, etc. Now, browser manufacturers develop the JavaScript engine in accordance with these guidelines in ECMAScript. So that independent of the browser we use, the output of a given JavaScript file will be same across these browsers. This is often rare in the case of other programming languages. Most often, the environment for running a program is developed and maintained by a single company or entity. For example, Java Runtime Environment is created by Oracle. The Runtime Environment of C Sharp, which is .NET Framework, which is developed and maintained by Microsoft. This is not the case with JavaScript. The rules and guidelines are specified in ECMAScript. It is a written document. And then we have these multiple browsers to implement the runtime environment or engine for a single language JavaScript in accordance with the ECMAScript. Since these web browsers are creating their JavaScript engines on their own, ECMAScript components and features are implemented in these web browsers in different ways. Sometimes that might be a problem. Some of the latest ECMAScript features might not be available in some web browsers. So you have to compensate that in your JavaScript programs. But when you think about the competition between these browsers, it's a good thing. These browser manufacturers are competing with each other to come up with a faster JavaScript engine. Currently, V8 is the fastest and popular JavaScript engine which is used in Google Chrome and Node.js server-side applications. So for rest of the discussions regarding JavaScript behind the scenes, we'll be using V8 as a reference. Though other JavaScript engines work almost in a similar fashion. Now let's talk about the role of a JavaScript engine. First of all, it should provide all the data types, operators, objects, and functions specified in ECMAScript. And the rest of the important things are left to the engine manufacturers, such as compilation or interpretation, execution of the program, memory allocation, garbage collection, etc. We will be discussing each of them later. Now let's talk about the second point which you must know before learning how JavaScript works. As I explained in one of my previous sessions, 
Consider the following code written in JavaScript. The symbols we use, numbers and operations in this program is unknown to computer machine. It can only understand binary code consisting of zeros and ones. The process of converting our code in a specific language to machine readable format is called compilation or interpretation. Before moving forward, let's briefly discuss what is compilation and what is interpretation. In compilation, first of all, the program is translated or compiled into an intermediate code or most often referred as object code. Then whenever you want to execute or run the program, you use this intermediate code. So compilation is a two-step process. The source code is translated once. From then onwards, the intermediate code is used to execute the program. Since code compilation or translation is done before the actual execution of the program, it is also called ahead of time compilation. Languages like C, C++ are compiled programming languages. If you had experience in these languages, you know that there are two commands to run the written program. For example, here we have got a C++ program and we are compiling it with a GNU compiler and this is the first step and we will get the intermediate code in the format of an exe file. Then whenever you want to run the program, just execute the exe file, you will get the output, which is the second step. Now let's talk about interpretation. It is a single step process. To be precise, in interpretation, code execution is a part of code translation. No intermediate code is created. For example, languages like Python, PHP, even JavaScript comes under interpreted languages. But there are some corrections to make which I will explain in a bit. Now consider this Python program. It is getting executed with a single line of command. That's it. Like that, when you want to run a JavaScript program in client side, we add them into HTML file with a script tag. The JavaScript file get executed while rendering the HTML. For those who worked in Node.js knows that JavaScript files are executed with a single command like node the name of the JavaScript file. Either way, whether it is on client side or server side, it's a single step process. During interpretation, translation and execution happen one line at a time. Since there is no intermediate code, each time when we run the program, the interpreter has to translate the program before the actual execution. While in compilation, the whole code is translated or compiled to intermediate code in one attempt without a pause. So while comparing it with interpretation, the compilation is faster. No need to translate the program each time when we execute the program. The translated binary code is there inside the intermediate output. Now, one of the major benefits of interpreter is that the code execution environment can be made more flexible because both the translation and code execution is happening simultaneously. Because of that, the interpreter has access to dynamic runtime informations like which part of the code is taking more time to execute, duplicate procedures, etc. and etc. So optimizing generated code at runtime is possible in interpretation. And for the same reason, these interpreted languages like Python, JavaScript, etc. often does not follow a line-by-line -line execution. They make adjustments to overcome the delay in the process of line-by-line -line interpretation. Now here, JavaScript does something brilliant called just-in-time compilation or abbreviated as JIT compilation, where the interpretation and compilation are merged to overcome the demerits of interpretation. So more about that will be discussed in next video tutorial. In next video, we will dig deep into JavaScript behind the scenes without complicating with unnecessary details. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to this channel Code Fiction. It will really motivate me to make more helpful videos like this. Also, please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can also benefit from this. See you in next video.